fallout from Ferguson. The White House taking new steps to keep military-grade weapons away from local police departments. And shutting down the port of Seattle. Activists are doing everything they can to stop an oil rig from heading north to the Arctic. Oh, this is Al Jazeera America, live from New York City. I'm John Henry Smith. Thousands of people are fleeing their homes in western Iraq now that Ramadi has fallen to ISIL control. Officials say upwards of 500 people have been killed in the latest fighting. Some 8,000 have been forced to leave. Secretary of State John Kerry spoke about ISIL during his trip to South Korea. He says the group, which he and others call Daesh, is growing stronger in the region and as such, the Iraqi government has no time to waste. Particularly in Ambar. The head of U.S. Central Command met with Iraq's defense minister in Baghdad today and thousands of Shia militia have arrived in Ramadi to kickstart the fight. Zaina Hodor has more. Al Jazeera, Baghdad. Well, the White House says it will no longer allow local police to buy some military-style equipment from the federal government. President Obama spelled out the restrictions in an executive order today. Arming local law enforcement stirred controversy after police were spotted in heavy riot gear and using armored vehicles as they clashed with protesters in Ferguson, Missouri last summer. Under the order, the federal government will no longer give police or pay for armored vehicles like tanks, weaponized aircraft or vehicles, grenades, or camouflage uniforms. Well, parts of Waco, Texas are on lockdown today, hours after rival biker gangs opened fire. Nine people were killed, nearly 200 arrested. Police say they, that the groups had gotten together at a restaurant to work out their differences when things got out of hand. Now, the shootings took place at the Twin Peaks restaurant. That will be closed for at least a week now. Police are on alert in Waco for possible retaliation today. Well, trains are rolling once again along Amtrak's Northeast Corridor. Service between Philadelphia and New York resumed this morning. It had been suspended for the last six days after a train derail, leaving eight people dead. Federal safety officials have ordered Amtrak to finish installing a speed control system that may have prevented last week's derailment. The engineer at the controls at the time says he has no recollection of what happened. Well, a new report is criticizing the U.S. military's handling of sexual assault claims. Human Rights Watch says military personnel who report the crime often face retaliation, and little is done to hold wrongdoers accountable. The Pentagon recently found 62% of women who reported assaults were subject to retaliation, and only 15% of suspects were court-martialed. Well, about 300 protesters have descended on the port of Seattle. They're using their bodies to try to shut down the port. The goal, blocking a drilling rig from getting to the Arctic. Alan Schauffler is live in Seattle. Alan, what's happening there right now? We're speaking their minds. Quite a drama unfolding out there. Alan Schauffler, thank you so much. Now, there is renewed fighting in the southeast African nation of Burundi today. Soldiers fired warning shots at protesters in the capital, Bujumbura, days after a coup against the president failed. The demonstrators are calling upon the president to drop his plans to run for a third term. Harun Mutasa reports from Burundi. It's calm but tense. Hours after a five-day humanitarian ceasefire ended, the Saudi coalition decided not to renew the truce because it says Houthi rebels repeatedly broke the agreement. In Riyadh today, Yemen's political, military and tribal leaders are talking about a lasting peace plan. The Houthis refused to attend a peace conference, saying any agreement in their absence will be irrelevant. Iran, which the U.S. and Saudis claim backs the Houthis, says it's disappointed the ceasefire has not been extended. So all in all, we need a very serious, concerted international effort to deal with Yemen. Uh Iranian state TV today showed footage of Iranian ships heading for Yemen, carrying aid. Hashem Mahalbara has the latest from Riyadh. Well, the European Union has approved military action to curb the influx of people crossing the Mediterranean into Europe. The plan will target human traffickers. Officials hope it will disrupt the flow of migrants by destroying boats used by the smugglers. The EU's foreign policy chief says the operation will be fully launched next month. 
Well, there's also a migrant crisis happening in Lebanon. More than a million Syrians fled there trying to escape the ongoing civil war. Omar Al Salah reports on one Lebanese camp giving some Syrians the opportunity to work and get back on their feet. Otherwise, uh, they're just concerned that there might be more violence uh, in the country. Hashama Halabara in Riyadh. Well, straight ahead on Al Jazeera America, the European Union takes new steps to try and stop a migrant crisis in the Mediterranean. Plus, a refugee success story from fleeing violence to running their own business far from home. Well, there's also a migrant crisis happening in Lebanon. More than a million Syrians fled there trying to escape the ongoing civil war. Omar Al Salah reports on one Lebanese camp giving some Syrians the opportunity to work and get back on their feet. Al Jazeera, Los Angeles. U.S. airlines expect to carry a record number of passengers this summer. The industry's leading trade group projects passenger loans will be up 5% over last year. 222 million passengers are expected to take to the skies. That could drive up demand for seats and, of course, that could drive up prices, too. Well, more than a quarter of workers here in the U.S. say they're bullied at their jobs. Maybe it's by a coworker. Maybe it's by a boss. Yet about 40% never speak up. Ali Velshi reports on the growing recognition of the issue and the legal battle to get Americans protected. Finally, Apple's CEO took the time this weekend to inspire college graduates. Tim Cook gave the commencement speech at George Washington University. He told the new grads, Silicon Valley is a special place because companies there are changing the world. Cook also told the new grads they don't have to give up their values to succeed in their careers. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Henry Smith. The news continues next, live from London.